Firstly, have a plan and write it down. Write it down because you will lose your mind in the middle of the crypto bull market. And your plan might be, okay, I need to average in over the next three months or two months or one month, or just pull the trigger now. I I'm indifferent to any one of those. It doesn't really matter. You know, if it, even if it pulls 30%, which is normal, it'll be back up. So don't, don't even worry about price where you get it. Then write down, I will expect, and I'll be grateful every time I have a 35% correction on route, and maybe I can buy some more. I will be grateful for that because then it's out of the way and we can move forwards again. So I actually like them because it's like, it's done. Right, next, let's go, let's go higher. Welcome back to Money 101. In today's discussion, Real Vision CEO Raul Pal shares his updated insights on the crypto landscape, offering predictions for the upcoming cycle and highlighting why this bull market will differ from previous ones. Given the prominence of crypto and technology in this year's investment landscape, Pal expresses continued bullishness on digital assets, having significantly increased his position during the recent bear market. In a recent interview with Crypto Nutshell, the former Goldman Sachs executive provides a portfolio update, pointing out crypto assets with substantial upside potential in the coming months. Pal emphasizes that more than ever, the crypto space is poised for significant capital influx, with major pension funds and institutional investors joining the upcoming cycle. His forecast envisions crypto evolving into a $10 trillion digital asset class, with this cycle standing out due to devalued fiat currencies driving increased adoption and unprecedented capital inflow. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated and support our content. Is there an exit strategy that you're looking to take chips off the table because then we're going to have that downturn, we're going to see monetary tightening, interest rates go up and less liquidity in the cycle, or are you not thinking out that far? Is there a... I am Is there thinking an that strategy? through, but I don't know the answers because I'm not sure that we get monetary tightening next time around. Let's just, we need to see the structure of this cycle. If, if, if inflation comes down as far as I think, I'm not sure we'll see monetary tightening. We might see yield curve control. So we might see some tightening, then yield curve control, which is ongoing printing of money. So I, I don't know the structure of what the next down cycle looks like, but it's probably not as bad as the one we've just gone through. However, if it plays like I, I expect, because I'm not as young as you, I would take off a decent amount of lifestyle chips and run the rest. Because I didn't do it that in the last cycle purposely, because I wanted to keep accumulating through the full cycle. And that's really paid off for me. And that was a phenomenal strategy because I'm at all time highs in PL um, because I bought in the depths of the bear market made the right switch to Solana, stuff like that, which is great. Um, but sometimes, yeah, you want to take off lifestyle chips. For you, you might want to just keep compounding. So we see Bitcoin run first, and we're seeing it play out pretty much in this cycle as well. We see Bitcoin run first, then we see it flow to Ethereum, and then Solana and all the altcoins get a run, and then NFTs. Are you, is, are you going to play the cycle around anything like that as we sort of move through it? Are you going to start allocating to crypto punks and bored apes or NFTs or anything? Or are you, is that a great way to fuck up this cycle trying to get too cute with yeah, it? Yeah, look, some people are good NFT traders. I own a whole bunch of punks, apes, um, Beeple, Xcopy, you know, all of the stuff you should own. I've got a bunch of that. But I'm not even sure I can sell them I, or if I want to sell them. Some people will trade it and will do very well from it. There will be an epic NFT cycle again. But really, it's an easy way to f*** it up too. The best thing is, it's assumed that if they're going up, the whole space is going up. So just stick with the program. And again, if you want to do the NFTs, put them in that 10% bucket. I'm sure people can figure out a bit of extra juice there. But if it all goes wrong, it doesn't matter. Because if you do get it wrong, and you put it in some random thing that looked like it was the biggest thing ever, and that project doesn't work, then you, you know, and it, and it falls, you know, 50% in ETH terms, you just halved your ETH exposure. It's like, no, that's a way to f*** it up. Firstly, have a plan and write it down. Write it down because you will lose your mind in the middle of the crypto bull market. 
And your plan might be, okay, I need to average in over the next three months or two months or one month, or just pull the trigger now. I, I'm indifferent to any one of those. It doesn't really matter. You know, if it, even if it falls 30%, which is normal, it'll be back up. So don't, don't even worry about price where you get it. Then write down, I will expect, and I'll be grateful every time I have a 35% correction on route, and maybe I can buy some more. I will be grateful for that because then it's out of the way and we can move forwards again. So I actually like them because it's like, thank God, it's done. Right, next, let's go, let's go higher. So expect that. Don't listen to your friends and FOMO because your friend is making more money because he's bought some toad meme that's gone up 57x and he's now flicking through brochures for cars. It's like, no, don't do that. Stick with your plan. Make, make sure it's about 80% of main assets. No main assets is not some random currency that you learnt about that you think is a is going to be the next big thing. That's not a big asset. That's in your 10% bucket. It's like, is it Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, and maybe some of the, you know, the, maybe XRP, maybe whatever. There's a group of 10 that are really big. It's not in like Bitwise's index. Don't bother doing it. It's simple. If not, it goes in your 10% bucket. No FOMO, no leverage. You will be so tempted, so tempted to go, well, maybe I can just lose some 3x leverage here. 3x isn't much, right? You know, these other DGENs are using 100x leverage. 3x is fine. 35% to pull back, you've lost your capital. People don't realize 35% is normal. Hell, we've had some 50%ers in bull markets before. So that's 2x leverage, you're out. So just don't that up and stop trying to trade it. I literally don't know many successful, super wealthy investors that made it from trading. Paul Tudor Jones, sure. But he's probably made more money by owning an asset management business, this hedge fund, than he has from actually trading. Yeah, Stan Druckermiller. If you think you're Stan Druckermiller, go get it. But you're not. The easiest way is to be the more on your buys and holds. It's just the easiest strategy in a market that does, on average, like 140% a year in the largest asset. You don't need, need to do anything else. You don't need leverage. You don't need to FOMO into other stupid stuff. Just do that. And then the other thing is be careful not to have your, to lose control of your coins. That's the final thing. So you've got it right. Bought the right asset allocation. You're being careful. You're filtering out the FOMO. You're having some fun in your DGEN portfolio. You haven't got leverage. And then suddenly you realize you've got on some stupid Thai exchange that goes down. <laughs> and you're like, oh, f I've just lost everything. I've done that. MF Global in the, in the old finance world, that old head of Goldman ran MF Global, the largest brokerage, retail futures brokerage. I had all of my money in it. And it went bust in two days. It's like, boom, gone. Took seven years to get my money back. So, you know, people in Mount Gox still haven't got their money back. So, that's the other risk that you've got. So, whether you're using a ledger device, whatever it is, you need to have that covered as well. Ah, oh, another one with wallets. Another way to fuck it up is, oh, look, there's a mint of some new amazing thing, quick. But attach my wallet. My wallet appears to be empty. <laughs> That's really simple to stop. You have, like, if you've got a ledger, you have three or four different wallets within your ledger. One is the one you expose to any like that. It has no assets in it. You transfer money in. You exchange with the asset out. You then have one where you are selling or buying your assets and you move that in to another holding wallet. And that doesn't really hold your important assets in. And then your important stuff, you put in a third one. Just don't blend it all together in some big omnibus soup. And then suddenly go, oh, I want to get that free JPEG. And before you know it, somebody's taken all of your long, hard savings at the end of 2025, when you you think you're about to buy a house and you're not. You're going to buy a cardboard box and live in the streets.
Powell's examination sheds light on the liquidity cycle as a key gauge for comprehending currency devaluation, indicating a shift in market dynamics. He pinpoints a pivotal juncture in June, marked by the lowest reading on his weekly liquidity index, prompting a strategic focus on acquiring Ethereum. Powell underscores the divergence between liquidity and asset prices, stressing that in bull cycles fueled by adoption and speculation, cryptocurrencies tend to outpace liquidity metrics. Drawing from his research, Raul Powell strongly advocates for strategic cryptocurrency investments, specifically citing Bitcoin and Ether as promising assets. He positions them as assets that outshine the performance of traditional financial institutions, bolstering portfolios against currency devaluation and addressing the inherent shortcomings of the current financial system. What are your thoughts on Raul Powell's assertion that investing in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether serves as an intelligent hedge against currency devaluation? Share your views in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more content similar to this.